bodybuilding actually is what got me my start in the business. And uh, that's what introduced me to supplementation, which I believe is our subject today. So uh, bodybuilding, like I said, it sort of uh, let me spread my wings and uh, got me started in the industry. And uh, now I'm an owner, owner and operator of a personal training studio. I was training for about uh, 10 years. I started very young, did everything completely wrong. And uh, that includes supplementation as well and uh, diet in general. And um, after 10 years, I started in the business and uh, also started uh, expanding my bodybuilding career as well and eventually won Mr. Ontario in 98 and Mr. All Natural Canada in 99. What I was doing wrong, per se, was I was taking a lot of different supplements. I was stacking them improperly. I was taking supplements that I didn't necessarily need to take. And I was basically a human guinea pig. I was experimenting with everything, spending a lot of money, and uh, not getting the results I was looking for. What I've done now is I've done a lot of self-research. Uh, I've done um, a lot of clinical trials with my clients. So I know what works, I know what doesn't work, spending a lot less money and getting a lot more results. I was competing, we had off seasons and on seasons. An off season was a period during the year, it was the better part of the year that we were preparing for an upcoming contest. We were trying to gain muscle and trying to gain as much weight as we could. Our goal was every competition we did to become more muscular, more lean, more hard, more ripped, more defined, all of these things. So it was an ongoing reciprocal type process where we would have an off season and then we'd also get into an in season. And the in season was just before a contest. Usually it was about maybe 12 to maximum 16 weeks depending on how much fat or weight we needed to lose. Now that in season had a completely different spectrum of supplements that we were taking. Well, I think we can divide supplements into two different genres. We've got the meal replacement supplements. These are protein bars, protein muffins, my favorite. We've got meal replacement powders that, uh, that encompass protein, carbs, and fats all in one meal. And then we have protein supplements, just straight protein. We've also got uh, ergogenetic type supplements. These are things like creatine, glutamine, which you've probably heard about. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm focusing more on the meal replacements. Let's face it, it's not a perfect world. It's hustle, it's bustle, and these meal replacements really come in handy because what you're able to do is ensure six meals per day guaranteed without missing any meals because missing meals can be very detrimental. I'm not using those ergogenic type aids or supplements any longer because again, I'm not trying to push the envelope anymore. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm healthy. I'm just trying to maintain. The best thing for someone that's going to be using supplements to do is blood work. I think a blood can tell everything you need to know about your body. If you're healthy, if you're unhealthy, if you've got deficiencies. And blood work over the course of time is very important as well. It'd be nice to look back when you're 60 at what your blood counts were when you were 20. And then you can see how age has affected you or maybe hasn't affected you. So I've done blood work. I know I don't have any deficiencies. I know all of my counts like cholesterol and sugar are all in check. So that's where I'm getting the healthy status from. When it comes down to it, it's all about your training, your dieting, your sleep, your lifestyle in general. These supplements, they give you that edge, but they don't give you the bulk of your results. And that's where a lot of misconceptions happen. These people are expecting sort of miracles in a bottle. I always knew that they were gonna be an aid and I always knew that I had to focus on the um, nuts and bolts, which again is uh, the training, the eating, and the sleeping. Uh, I think those are the three uh, portions of the pyramid of success when it comes to health, fitness, bodybuilding, whatever you have. Uh, when you're getting ready for a bodybuilding show, uh, the be all end all is that day you're gonna be on stage. It's a competition within yourself. It's really neat actually, because we never see in most cases the competitors until the day of. So the competition for 12 to 16 weeks is me against me. So it's a really interesting scenario in comparison with other sports. In fact, I think bodybuilding has to be one of the toughest sports. I'll tell you a story. We used to have track friends. So we would go out and train with these track guys, uh, 100 meter sprinters, so on and so forth. Now they would train hard. They train for one, two, three hours a day. But then I get to see them having their potato with steak and what have you. 
I didn't get that. I still had to train one, two, three hours a day, but I wasn't able to eat what they were eating. And that's really what makes bodybuilding very, very tough. We're training just as hard as other athletes, but yet we're not able to eat like other athletes. And that's where supplements come in. Fruits and vegetables in bodybuilding lingo was taboo. We didn't want fruits and vegetables because they weren't going to give us anything we need. All we needed was muscles and more muscles. So fruits and vegetables were something that weren't going to give us muscles. So therefore, we didn't need them. We didn't need them. So now fruits and vegetables are part of my diet. That's what I mean. It's a very holistic type of approach I have now. Very balanced because I'm trying to get into more of a, a maintaining of healthy lifestyle type of paradigm versus in the past, it was all about one thing and one thing only, and that was getting on stage and being as muscular and as ripped as possible.